2002 Villanova Wildcats provided another exciting and successful season. It was a season where the Cats welcomed some tremendous accomplishments and bid farewell to some outstanding performers. Once again, under Coach Andy Talley's watchful eye, the Villanova football program earned the right to be called one of the best in the nation. Seniors provided leadership on both sides of the ball, and a wealth of young talent was discovered. Wildcat Football 2002, a season that highlighted today's achievement and tomorrow's promise. Villanova started its 2002 season by traveling up the New Jersey Turnpike to take on Division I Rutgers. Villanova was looking to earn respect right away. Rutgers, on the other hand, was looking to prove that Villanova had no business picking on the mighty Big East Conference. Villanova proved them wrong early in the first quarter when senior quarterback Brett Gordon and senior wideout Brian White combined to sting the Scarlet Knights. This game also marked the debut of Villanova's outstanding defense. It was a Wildcat defense that set the tone early and often. Led by senior linebacker Jamison Young, the Cats defense kept Rutgers from gaining momentum. At halftime, Villanova held a surprising four-point lead. But the best was yet to come. The second half saw Villanova stick a dagger into the Knights with an outstanding bit of trickery. on, the Cats were rolling. The defense held Rutgers to just six second-half points. The Lenovo defenders were wreaking havoc all evening in the RU backfield. Brett Gordon and the Nova offense kept the ball moving, adding two fourth-quarter scores. Running back Phil DiGiacomo had two touchdowns in the game, one rushing, one receiving. Tailback Terry Butler had an outstanding 2002 debut with 121 yards rushing on 21 carries including a late 41-yard touchdown run. Senior Brian White was named A-10 and Sports Network National Offensive Player of the Week for his 12 catches and a 165-yard performance. In the end, it was Villanova that made the statement. The Cats locker room was all smiles. What a way to start the season. Game two saw Villanova continue north, traveling to Hamilton, New York, to take on Colgate University. For the second week in a row, it was Villanova's defense that shut down the opposition. Against the gritty Wildcat D, Colgate was never able to get anything going. And Todd's held Colgate to only 134 total yards, and only 23 net rushing yards for the game. The Cats' D was back. Red Gordon led the offense with 377 passing yards. Terry Butler scored both Villanova touchdowns. Butler added six catches for 103 yards. The Wildcats had back-to-back -back road wins. Villanova's offense exploded for 484 yards and 45 points as the Cats buried the University of New Hampshire. Villanova dominated both sides of the ball. The defense held New Hampshire to just 32 yards rushing. For his part in Villanova's outstanding defensive effort, freshman Brian Julio was named Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. Terry Butler ran for 95 yards on 18 carries and added two touchdowns. Villanova backs rushed for an incredible 316 yards on the afternoon. Red Court connected on 14 of 20 attempts, including two touchdown passes to Cameron Cross. In the end, the Cats proved to themselves and to the nation just what they were capable of when they clicked on both sides of the ball. The Cats ventured down south to Harrisonburg, Virginia to take on James Madison University, looking for an Atlantic 10 road victory. Quarterback Red Gordon led the way. Gordon had one of the best outings of his Wildcat career. Gordon threw for 421 yards and four touchdowns. He completed 40 of his 57 passing attempts, including an important one to redshirt freshman John Deeser. 
Beezer had six catches for 136 yards and two touchdowns and was named A-10 Rookie of the Week. Gordon also connected with senior receiver Shaz Brown eight times for 100 yards. Brown made some important catches late in the game to keep the chains moving. Gordon was named A-10 and Sports Network Offensive Player of the Week. The Cats' defense was strong when it counted. Sophomore cornerback Jeremy Morgan came up with a big play that helped seal the victory. Reach for the road, 33 yards. We're under a minute 20, about to throw his hand is up. Up the left side, Jimmy Morgan for the second. He picked it up. He picked it up. He's in the field. 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 He's in the Wildcats return to Villanova Stadium for a homecoming matchup with the Hofstra Pride. They took this game over early. Brett Gordon had another outstanding performance. The senior quarterback was 26 of 35 for 234 yards and four touchdowns. Gordon connected with 10 different Wildcat receivers in the game. The Wildcat defense held Hofstra to only 259 yards and one meaningless late score. It was another complete effort for the Cats. Once again, for his outstanding performance, Brett Gordon was named the A-10 Offensive Player of the Week. Touchdown, Phil DiGiacomo! With only a short time to prepare, the Cats hosted the University of Pennsylvania. The game was played in a steady rain. The condition kept the game a low-scoring affair. Villanova defense held 10 to just 172 yards in total offense. The Cats defense controlled the line of scrimmage, allowing the Quakers only 27 yards rushing. Brian Julia led the Cats with nine tackles and two sacks. Jeremy Morgan added a key second-half interception to set up a Wildcat score. On play action, Gordon got the open man, Cameron Cross for the touchdown. In tough conditions, Brett Gordon was able to throw for 271 yards and a touchdown while rushing for another score. Brian Wright had five catches for a game-high 96 yards. Villanova had another W and city bragging rights for another season. The Cats returned to Villanova Stadium two weeks later for a crucial Atlantic 10 showdown with the Wigan and Mary Trump. A victory would go a long way in helping the Wildcats play off over. Villanova got on the board early when Brett Gordon hit John Deezer for a 24-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. The Cats added two more first-half touchdowns and took an 11-point lead into the locker room at halftime. After Wigan and Mary kept the lead on a touchdown late in the third quarter, the Cats struck back. Brett Gordon hit senior Cameron Cross on a short touchdown pass to give the Wildcats some breathing room. Now it was in the hands of the defense. The Cats' D had kept the tribe's dangerous attack off balance most of the day. Now it had to stop William and Mary one last time deep in its own territory to seal the victory. So it's first and 20. Corley scrambled and he's sacked by Jamison Young. Four-man rush. Now here comes Young on the blitz. Corley scrambles, and Young got him again. Fourth down and 15. Back to throw is Corley, and there's a block throw. He's under pressure now, and he's thrown down. Corey Taylor got him at the 25. It'll go in as a sack, and a catch. Take over. And a great team effort. The offense tallied an impressive 541 yards. Brett Gordon, who was 19 of 26 for 256 yards and four touchdowns, was again recognized as the Atlantic 10 Offensive Player of the Week. Three freshman Martin Mo Gibson had his first career 100-yard rushing day for Villanova. Gibson had 12 carries for 109 yards and a touchdown. The defense was led by linebacker Jamison Young, who had five tackles and two big sacks. And by Brian Julia, who had 10 tackles on the afternoon. The Cats were fired up after smoking William and Mary. But they knew there was more work ahead. On a rainy Saturday, Villanova played its final regular season home game against the University of Rhode Island. 
it was a chance to honor the Wildcat seniors, a group that has meant so much to the continued success of Villanova football. Fred Gordon threw for three touchdowns and went over the 300-yard mark for the second straight season. Fitting seniors Brian White and Shaz Brown caught touchdowns to help the Villanova Cards. On defense, senior Gary Johnson blocked a punt to set up a Villanova score. Jameson Young added 11 tackles and a sack to his growing total. Sophomore Raymond Ventrone had an outstanding day with 10 tackles and a fumble recovery. It was a fitting send-off for the seniors. It also marked the 150th career coaching victory for head coach Andy Talley. Coach Talley and the Cats knew that they could dry off and savor this win. But in the morning, they'd have to start to prepare for the biggest game of the season. There were few games in the recent history of Villanova football that were more important and more intense than their 36th meeting against the University of Delaware. A win for Villanova meant an almost certain trip to the postseason. The sights and sounds of this game should speak for themselves. There he goes in motion. The handoff with a lead blocker in front of him. And into the end zone is Mo Gibson. Third down and fairly long. Connor with the blitz coming. Little inside catch is picked off. The tip ball and the pick off Isaiah Harrison. Second down and long. And throwing without any problem at all. First down yardage. Staying inside the line and a touchdown. Second down. It's collapsing around him. And he's down. And loses the football, but they say the ground caused it. But the man in motion. Gordon, open man, cross. season's national runner-up, Furman. The Paladins of Furman came to Villanova Stadium ranked length in the nation. In the first half, Furman jumped out to an early lead. The Cats needed a spark. They found it in Mo Gibson. Gibson far side, 5-10. 15, 20. Gibson got some room. He can get to the outside. Turns up to the 40 yard line. He just from behind. He's at midfield. He's at the 45. Down to the 40. Down to the 30. Turns along to the 20. Gets a block. To the 15. To the 10. To the 5. Go oh, Gibson goes 99 yards. Oh, he fell over. Touchdown. Gibson's return gave the Wildcats some life. But they still found themselves down going into the game's final quarter. What followed was an incredible display of guts and determination on both sides of the ball that led to one of Villanova's greatest comeback wins. Hitting the snap, he's got it, he's rolling. There's Gordon, he's looking, he's looking, he's got him again, White! Same play as last week, Villanova touchdown! And he's looking to throw the football, and he throws over the middle, and it's caught by West, and he breaks free, he's got a first down. Green, double, over the turf, Gary Johnson just pick it up and he's got it! Hold on to the football, Johnson up the left side, midfield, he's at 45, he's down at the 40, first down, Wildcat! Austin Gibson from the eight. That's the open side of the field. Gordon has it. He fakes. He's looking. He's got Chilla open. He doesn't see him. He throws for Chilla. And he has it. Boy, oh, Villanova touchdown. Matt 
Looking to one out of 38 all game. They go to Butler. He runs to the outside, back to the inside, and... Into the end zone! Pulling over, touchdown! Corbin, with 52 seconds left. Napier's back to throw. He has some time. He's looking. He's throwing deep. Down the side. It's going to be overthrown. It's incomplete. Is there a flag? No, no flag. flag. Going over 46 win. seconds left. Going over the win. Cats are on the move. We're going to the quarterfinals. What a comeback this is. Coach Talley and the Wildcats pulled off a great comeback and reported one of the program's greatest victories. More important, Villanova moved on to the second round in the playoffs, an outstanding accomplishment. Their next opponent, the Patriot League champion, Fordham Rand. The Cats knew they were a victory away from a trip to the national semifinals. It was the last home game for Villanova's outstanding senior class. A chance to help earn the program an historic victory. The 2002 Wildcats were not going to be denied. Out of the full gun on the Villanova 37 out of the shotgun. He's looking, he throws down the middle. Intercepted! Picked off by Gary Johnson at the Villanova 11-yard line. His third INT of the season for the senior from Waukegan, Illinois. 3.06 to go, opening half, trips to the right, that's the open side of the field, single setback is Gibson. Here they go, over the middle, catch, oh, lateral back, nicely, wait, back to Gibson, to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, quick play Wildcats, wait to Gibson on the lateral. White comes now in motion, maybe they'll throw the fade, no, they left side toss, getting the ball with Butler, Place to get into the end zone, for a over touchdown, great block by White to open it up, and the Cats up 16-3, to Perry Butler's 10th score of the season. Back to throw is Egan on third down of nine. He looks, he throws into the end zone, going to be all picked off of the end zone. Darnell Green got it, playing center field. It's overthrown, and the Cats take over. The football at the 10 yard line of Fordham. Here comes White through the line of scrimmage. Sets up as a wing, back to throw. Gordon's looking, Gordon surveys, throws over the middle, caught by Terry Butler, and he takes it into the end zone for a Villanova touchdown. Gordon takes the knee. Down to 25 seconds. Ryan Bennett, I've got a question for you. Are you ready? Are you ready, Ryan? I'm ready. Bring it. You want to go to the semifinals, Ryan? Let's go, Joe. Let's go. We're going to go, Ryan. There's 15 seconds left. Let's go. First time since they brought football back in 1985 at the 1AA level, Joe. I want you to count it down. That's how sweet it is. We're going to the semis, partner. Despite playing most of the game with a broken thumb on his throwing hand, quarterback Brett Gordon was an incredible 26 for 30, throwing for 219 yards and two touchdowns. His effort inspired Villanova to a historic victory. A quarterfinals win earned the Wildcats a trip to Lake Charles, Louisiana for a national semifinal game against the McNeese State Cowboys. The game was broadcast live on ESPN. The national viewing audience was not cheated. They got to see an exciting contest. Little counter pitch to King, stopped in the backfield. And that's going to turn it over on down to four wide receivers. White with a spectacular catch down the right hash mark to about the 23-yard line. Deep. To Shaz Brown. Touchdown, Wildcats. To Giacomo, the lone setback. Gets the handoff inside. Touchdown, Villanova. They won't go away, Rod. But what a tremendous performance. But Brett Gordon, I, I don't think I've seen a more courageous performance in college football. In the end, in spite of a heroic effort by the Wildcats, the incredible and historic 2002 season came to a close. Each and every player on this history-making Villanova squad deserves special recognition and should be proud of their accomplishment. A number of Villanova players were recognized for their efforts on and off the field. In keeping with their tradition for outstanding student-athletes, Villanova placed 13 players on the Atlantic 10 Conference All-Academic Team. They were Mike Finn, Brett Gordon, Noah Hoffman, Adam James, Mike Roseman, Jason Sachs, Anthony Wright, Carmen DeFrancesco, Kingsley Echema, Carmen Falcone, Brian Julia, Dan Silva, Raymond Ventrone. 
A number of Wildcats were honored by the Atlantic 10 Conference for their own field efforts in 2002. On defense, sophomore and Terrence Taylor was named All-Atlantic 10. Taylor made a number of big plays in 2002. Also, redshirt freshman Brian Julia was recognized by the Atlantic 10. Julia was one of Villanova's top tacklers and provided leadership and enthusiasm to Nova's powerful defense. Senior Gary Johnson was selected as an all-conference team member. Johnson leaves a legacy of versatility and leadership that will always be remembered at Villanova. Senior Jamison Young led the Wildcat defense in tackles for the second straight season. In 2002, Young was the heart and soul of the reborn Villanova defense. His spirit and skill was behind much of this season's success. On the offensive side of the ball, junior center Mike Finn was named to an Atlantic 10 All-Star team. Senior tackle Sean McCarthy joined Finn as an Atlantic 10 All-Star. Both anchored an offensive line that was a huge key to the Wildcats' success. Junior tight end Matt Chilla was named first team All-Atlantic 10 and received ECAC honorable mention. Chilla was an important clutch performer for the Cats in 2002. Senior wide receiver Brian White leaves Villanova as one of the school's all-time career reception leaders. White was Villanova's go-to guy. Time and time again, White made catches to propel the Cats to victory. Brian White was named All-Atlantic 10 for his performance in 2002. Finally, senior quarterback, Brett Gordon. Gordon finishes his Villanova career as one of the best quarterbacks in school history. Gordon's career statistics put him on or near the top of nearly all of Villanova's passing records. His late game heroics cemented his legacy as one of the greatest field generals Villanova has ever seen. In 2002, Villanova's Brett Gordon was selected the ECAC Player of the Year, the Atlantic 10 Conference Offensive Player of the Year, and an All-American by the Sports Network. Gordon was runner-up for the Walter Payton Award given to the most outstanding player in 1AA. In 2002, head coach Andy Talley and his Villanova Wildcats received the Lambert Meadowlands Trophy. The trophy honors the best college teams in the East. It is the second time in the Talley era that Villanova has won this award. In 2002, the Villanova Wildcats made a memorable and historic march all the way to the NCAA semifinals. They were a team in the true sense of the word, feeding off each other's success, never giving up, never quitting, with leadership from an outstanding senior class, contributions made by some future Wildcat standouts, the 2002 Cats celebrated their success. They made their mark and will be remembered as one of the best Wildcat football teams in school history.